friends. Hi, everybody. How are we you are guys? Not, we are not together for our work session today. So I feel like it's almost like a little Brady Munch box where you're supposed to look down. And I like look up. And, and I'm looking like down at you. Yeah. I don't know I if they it. can like see it the same. I don't know what view. I, don't, I actually in. don't know that answer to that. But we actually are popping. We are popping on here live. Mm-hmm. We were just having a pretty just a good discussion about um, what it actually takes to grow and scale in the direct sales industry. So if you're not really familiar with what direct sales is, and to be honest with you, when Melanie and I both started our direct sales business, we didn't even know that's what it was called. We didn't, we didn't have any idea that there was a technical name for this type of business model, but direct sales is network marketing. And network marketing companies um, are, they're pretty amazing in that you can build a successful business through sales and you can have incredible success through sales alone, but you also have the opportunity to lead through duplication. And that allows for residual income as well. So no matter what direct sales company you are a part of, what a great time to be involved in the industry and to really learn and to just see if it's a good fit for you. So we thought we would pop on here with just a couple of ideas and strategies that we have implemented that have been really effective for us as we've scaled our businesses to um, well over seven figures at this time. So if you want to kind of like chat a little bit about that, that would be cool. Hi, April and Sharice. I see you guys live. It's so good to have you on. I can see it over here. I've got got like the dual screen going. So it is a rainy Tuesday in Western Pennsylvania, but here's the scoop. Um, You know, I have been doing a little bit of reading. Both Katie and I are reading books right now that we've already read before. And I love, actually, somebody said this last night in a conversation too, about how different books serve us at different times. And we're getting ready to start our direct sales mentorship. And we're in the middle of our framework mentorship. We've got our community clients that we're working with, our private coaching clients. And the one thing that every single business owner that Katie and I have ever worked with, including ourselves, we sort of have this, we kind of underestimate the amount of effort or I should say even more specifically, we underestimate the amount of people we are gonna need to talk to in order to get the results that we want. We also underestimate the amount of time it is going to take to reach our goals. And I remember so very clearly the day that I decided to launch my business on Facebook. I can remember all the time it took me to put together that launch post, choosing the right photo, choosing the right wording. And then what I did was I circled the kitchen table like a shark. And I tried to talk myself out of posting, hitting submit, return on that post because I was so nervous about what were other people going to think? Were other people going to want to join me? Were they going to support me? And I was so excited about the business venture and what I was starting. And I had all of these ideas swirling around inside of my mind. So I was like excited. I couldn't wait. I was a little bit nervous. Anybody else kind of have that feeling inside your belly when you start something new and you really know it's going to be good, but you're just sort of afraid to put yourself out there? Well, that was me. And when I hit submit, what happened was a flood of comments started to come in. People were excited. They were, congratulations. I'm so excited for you. Tell me what you're doing. Sign me up. And instantly I'm like, oh my God, this is easy, right? And so I sat down at the kitchen table and I I know hours went by and I was having conversations and I got through every conversation. And guess what happened at the end? I didn't make one sale. I walked away with zero dollars. Why? Because everybody was literally just cheering for me. They were excited, but even though they said, sign me up, oh, they were already invested in this other product and they had already bought this subscription and they were, you know, they were just didn't have the money right now or, oh, they were too busy. I mean, I got every excuse in the book and suddenly what happened is my balloon became a little bit deflated, but luckily I was 
being just surrounding myself with personal development. I was reading books and I knew that when that happened, not to get discouraged because not everybody is going to say yes. And that I was going to need to prove myself that I was going to need to talk to more people. I was going to have to keep showing up and saying, Hey, I didn't just make this one post and, and now I'm done, but no, you're going to keep seeing me show up. You're going to keep seeing me add value and share tips and, you know, be inspiring and show you my journey. Right. And it was over that course of time that business started to happen, but I underestimated the amount of effort that it was going to take to get there. So the bottom line with that story is that when you say, oh, this is going to be easy, this should, I should be able to make, you know, $500 in my, my first week in the business. I want you to say, I should be able to make $500 in my first two months in the business, right? So I think that that is really step number one is having realistic expectations about the time that it is going to take to build the business. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that story. I think on the other end of the spectrum, whenever I came into the business, I actually, what I did was I came in and I hosted a party and I did have initial sales, initial results. And I was like, this is really easy. And then the next month went by and it wasn't <laughs> so easy anymore. And so no matter where you are in your direct sales business, if you're actually just getting started and you haven't made your first sale or you've been in it for a little while and you had initial success and, and now you're wondering how you actually do this thing, if, how you actually scale it, how you actually grow your business, how you, how you continue to grow without feeling that frustration of, of getting rejection over and over and over again. You know, Melanie and I find that there's sort of a rule of thumb. Uh, and that general rule of thumb is really one out of 10, especially when you're starting or especially when you're, you're just beginning to be consistent with your business. One out of 10 become a yes which means very likely we need to have more conversations, right? And what Melanie and I really have learned over time is that's just a common thread between what we have experienced in our own lives and what we have seen with the people that we have mentored. And as we continue to mentor women through Chic Influencer in the direct sales space, if we're not achieving the goals that we need to achieve to be able to hit our big dreams or do the things that we want to be able to do, comes down to conversations, having enough of them and allowing those conversations to convert. Mm -hmm. And so when Melanie and I designed um, the direct sales, um, direct sales done right mentorship, we really took into consideration our systems. There are really four key areas to really help you scale to the next level of your business. And a big part of that is looking at your current situation and the numbers of conversations you're having and saying, but how do I actually get them to convert? And that's part of what we do in that mentorship. Yeah. And, you know, I think that it's so easy to, you know, go through and set, have conversations, but are you actually inviting people to what you do? And that is sort of this, this moment where people in direct sales go, oh, I feel icky. I feel icky you know, sending a direct message to every single person that I'm friends with, yep. or, you know, I don't want to sell to my family and friends. And so one of the things that we do teach is number one, you as the business owner are showing up on your social media and you're not, your sole job is not to sell. Your sole job is to connect right? To connect with like-minded individuals and to share what you're passionate about. And then it is also that other part where you're out there connecting to people who have the same passions and interests. You're commenting, you're liking, you're sharing, you're giving advice back and forth about things that don't always have, you know, anything to do with what you sell. And so what happens is you build this no like, and trust factor with your cold market that you are engaging with every single day. And then what we teach you to do is as, you know, people are liking the content that is about your business, or they're consistently watching your stories, or they're showing up and they are asking questions. Now it makes sense to send that and in, that invite and to invite people to join you. And one of the things that, oh, I had a girl say this to me yesterday. 
it's kind of like speed dating, right? On social media, you're like out there looking for other people that could be like you. You're, you're coming across Instagram accounts. You're checking out your explore page. You see suggested friends and you're, it's not that we're just friend requesting everybody, but we're just sort of looking for people with the same core values and the same interests that we can connect with. Cultivate a relationship, have that first date, that first interaction on social that eventually leads to a friendship, or maybe it does lead to something that has to do with your business, right? But when you really look at it like that, it takes the ick factor out of it and really cultivates friendships and relationships along the way. All right. So Katie, anything oh. else you want to leave them with no. today? No, I feel like the only thing that I would suggest is just look at your account and ask yourself, do I feel like I'm creating an opportunity for people to engage with me? Yeah. Am I really somebody that people would want to connect with? And it's just a skill that you get better at over time. It's not just about what you sell. It's at the core of who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of direct sales is you can really create such a powerful message beyond just the product or the service or the experience that you provide to your consumers or your clients or the people who join your team. And so we hope that if this is something that you've been thinking about and joining us and letting Melanie and I mentor you through four weeks of really on hand training uh, for how to really just crush it in your industry. We hope that you take it into consideration. We're going to actually drop the link in the comments section. It does fill up. Um, we do have spots remaining um, right now, but we do anticipate in the coming days it will fill up. So you want to make sure you check it out, see if it's a good fit for you. And we can't wait to see you in class. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.